Think of drag as being so much more than just a man who dresses like a woman. Drag is really kind of a state of mind, it's a style. It's about being larger than life, theatrical, putting on a show. Midnight Mass is my midnight movie experience, extravaganza, as I like to call it. Where a live drag element, a pre-show, would be part of the deal. The idea was to really create an environmental experience for the audience that was bigger than just the stage show, but really to involve the audience, to include everyone as part of this experience. Again? Sure. Okay. Why not? I'm Joshua Grinnell, but most people know me better as my drag queen alter ego, Peaches Christ. Well, I think I think actually after she tears through, you want probably want to go back into full disco lighting. Okay. Yeah. Yes. It's it very like strange that. when your hobby becomes, in a sense, your career. I think there's body parts over there. Okay which is such a weird thing to call it. I think they're gonna break. I mean, I don't know that it is the career I ever um, planned for or wanted, but I'm really glad that I have it. We started in the summer of 1998, and Midnight Mass was, um, Kind of an idea that was born out of um, hearing about the coquettes and the underground drag scene of San Francisco. The fact that they did midnight shows before they'd screen movies. We were part of a group of performers uh, called Tranny Shack at the time. And Tranny Shack was really just wild and outrageous and a lot of fun. Drunken, it was debaucherous, you know. And, um, and that's where I met all of my friends. <laughs> Midnight Mass was sort of, I would say, an offshoot of Tranny Shack. The same performers who performed at Tranny Shack and were our friends. Midnight Mass, proud present, Midnight Mass was an idea that Martini and I had. Martini is my flawed, tragic sidekick. I've been working at real over at the SK Milchink, the deepest Every week, we'd mount a different movie and a different show. Midnight Mass kind of started really janky. days were awkward and weird and I fell on my face more than once. But you learn um, how to become a better performer or MC through, through getting back out there and doing it over and over and over again. Give you all new parts. In some ways I think we learned that the audience appreciated our lack of professionalism. Valley of the Dolls With 
Performers at Midnight Mass are now surprised because we actually have rehearsals. You know, that didn't, you know, happen in the early years. We just kind of got on stage and winged it. But if you do, you join my doll squad. I'm not just an average dog. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Don Mancini and Jennifer Tilly. I actually signed this, <laughs> and I sat behind Anne during the entire show. It's funny because I met Joshua early on, and he was a very mild-mannered, nice young boy, and then he incarnated into the horrifying Peaches Christ. I really, it was an astonishing metamorphosis. It's a lot of friends getting together, and you know, cardboard props, and paint, and glitter, and a lot of um, fun goes into putting on the show. So in some ways, like, we've been doing this for 15 years, and it's still the same as it always was, but it did kind of grow to become bigger and bigger over the years. And instead of doing look-alike contests, we started actually inviting some of the celebrities and they would come and participate. Who makes us laugh in every movie that she stars? Who? Anybody want to sit down here? Yeah, I'm invited to sit down here. There you go. All right. What would happen if I took that off? <laughs> I heard this might happen. You can. You can? Yeah, go for it. You know, we just did a show with Cloris Leachman. Like, that's so weird. That's a deathbed memory you just gave me. I'll remember that. It's a deathbed memory for me, too. <laughs> you look amazing. Can you just shoot me now? <laughs> oh. Why don't you guys let this movie die? I like kind of built a career like celebrating and worshiping um, my idols. So like I'm kind of just this big dorky fan who created this character that gets to, you know, go out and celebrate, um, you know, the people I look up to and admire. From San Francisco, California. <laughs> so everyone thinks that I've probably been doing drag since I was a little kid. And the truth of the matter is, I did dress up as a little kid all the time. Yeah. So this is a picture of me uh, wearing this werewolf mask that I was really in love with. I was pretty obsessed with it. Um, this is just a Halloween picture of me and my, my sister and my brother. This is just me as a little kid. Again, like, this is a sort of a year-round thing. I've been wearing makeup um, a long time. Are you D E? Um, not exactly sure. Are you D E spells rude, honey? I never really dressed as a lady character until I was a senior in college, and I was making my senior thesis film, Jizz Mopper. I'm here about the janitor's position. Janitor is way off. What we're looking for here is an ejaculatory maintenance engineer. Could you put that in layman's terms? A chiz mopper, sweetie. The one thing you gotta do is lap it up. It was kind of before drag had become like trendy. It certainly wasn't trendy in the middle of Pennsylvania where I went to school. The actor that we'd hired to play the drag part uh, was late or didn't show up. Oh wait. So a professor of mine at the time actually pulled me aside and kind of was like nudging me like, you should basically be the drag queen, you know? And I should mention that I was the only openly gay film student at the time at Penn State. Like there wasn't a line of people waiting to play drag queens, you know, in central Pennsylvania in a movie called Jizz Mopper. So I, I stepped in and became Peaches okay. for the movie. My name isn't Hey, it's Peaches. Peaches Nevada. My first time in drag 
is forever captured yeah. on film, 16 millimeter film. And it's a tragic, terrible, awkward thing. But that's really where I got my start in show business was uh, in the movie Jizz Mopper. And from there, um, shortly thereafter, you know, I had a taste. I had gotten bit by the show business bug and I decided to move to San Francisco, California. We were just so clueless, you know, we were young and dumb and, and moved to San Francisco because it sounded like a good place to be. I was inspired by the underground filmmaking scene here. I thought it would be a good transition city between either New York or Los Angeles, where that, that's where I would go to really become a filmmaker. I'm just gonna go to San Francisco temporarily to be an artist. I think in some ways Tranny Shack and Midnight Mass and Peaches Christ, um, these things, I don't think they'd have happened in other cities. Yeah. I think it'll be fine. I don't really like photo shoots very much. Yeah. It's just sort of weird, because it's like, it's sort of fake performing. You're performing for nothing. Wait, I'll go here, and you walk around. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> it's not gonna work. You're totally gonna use it, I know. She thinks she knows. <laughs> Around too many filmmakers. <laughs> okay. I can make my own. You're gonna have to ask for a little privacy. Okay. 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 Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. What? Excuse wow. me, Tria. <laughs> Career is kind of like failing. Oh, yeah, because yeah. okay. you're within the boundary of the. Ooh, that's a good smile. Yeah. <laughs> I just think it's a special city. As much as I love New York and LA and other cities, I really do think that San Francisco is a special place when it comes to allowing these sorts of art movements to be nurtured. go to New York and you kind of feel like, you know, people are kind of sitting there with their arms crossed, kind of like, impress me. I've come here, I've come out to this show, and now it's time for you to impress me. This stage is not clean! San Francisco, it's like, oh my God, this is fun. Like, we're at a party and I wore a stupid wig and I'm ready to have a good time. I think San Francisco is just a special place when it comes to performance. And food. <laughs>or creates a doll of peaches, or sends me a piece of um, fan artwork. I think that my fans, it's so weird to say that, but I like to call them the children of the popcorn. She doesn't just have like a gay following, it's kind of like a whole clusterfuck of crazy people that love her. She's amazing, she's just got a great personality, she's very giving to everybody she meets, and she's a great artist. I think he loves people. And that's what it's all about. Collaborative efforts and theatrical efforts and fun and play. Hi. Ryan painted this incredibly risque, downright pornographic painting of me. When would I am here at Glamorama. We're celebrating basically the life and times of Peaches Christ. I think Peaches Christ to me is so fascinating because um, 
it's not just a drag persona, it's, it's, like, it's like an empire. I've always worked with a team of people. I'll conceptualize a look for Peaches and then my costume designer, Tria, will come in and we'll sit down and we'll do sort of a sketch and she makes it because that's what she's good at. It's made out of 100% polyester. No, I don't know. <laughs> we call this style of design for couture. This is Trixie Carr, who is a known stripper, performance artist. Well, technically I don't strip. You don't? I, no, I, I've danced naked, but I start out naked. I don't take <laughs> off my clothes. I'm a fan of the people I get to work with, like Putinesca and Hecklina and Temi Spence, and, and believe it or not, even Martini. What, what's up with Martini? Is she gonna show up? She Did just she... walked in the door. Where oh is my Martini? God. Mar, how dare you? I'm over here so I can pour my drink on you. Yeah. I used to think about the future all the time. I used to have a lot of anxiety about like, oh my God, I'm gonna be an old queen. You know, and that's a horrible thing to be. And now I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna like see how it goes. Really, as long as I'm around, I think that I'll just keep doing what I do for as long as it makes sense, really. Oh, an autograph picture of me? There you go. With the wonders of cosmetic surgery and CGI, I could feasibly be around for another 60 years. It's so much fun. Like we have so much fun and so many people now have fun with us. From the facts of life, <laughs> it's Natalie and Brer. I do love, am I allowed to say Josh? He just did. As soon as we lose that spirit of fun, or we, we kind of lose our sense of humor about what it is we do, either I'll retire or someone should put a bullet in my head. And then when I'm done, I think we should have a funeral, a big funeral. I think that would be the fiercest way, you know, to retire. On the Kinsey scale, I think I'm like a pretty gay person because I'm looking at it and I'm like... <laughs> Most of the other queens, um, I don't like very much. So, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> that was really good aim. For queen, that's unusual. So that was that must have been some velvet rage coming through. Does that hit me right in the head?